Hi, this is Dear Nelson, and today I'm going to do a cute little painting of Blue Door. Um, this painting I did a long time ago. It is fairly simple as shapes, and I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm going to do it a little bit bigger like the original. It's just an inch bigger, 5x5, five five. Um, but everything inside is... Um, rectangles, squares, and circular shapes. So there is that. Let's begin and have some fun. And if you like this video, please give us thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for my channel. And if you see that bell icon, click on it to get all notifications for the future videos. And we come with videos every Tuesday. I will post everything that I'm using, colors, paint, and materials and you're gonna have links so that will make it easy for you to get what you need to make this painting all right let's begin i'm gonna use acrylics i'm also gonna use small brushes i have only one um, angled brush and this is pretty small size i'll put my glasses so i know what i'm doing and I have round brushes. So the rest are round brushes. The biggest one is 12. It's pretty simple. I mean, pretty small canvas. So we're going to keep it small and cute. And the rest of them are small brushes. So first thing first is kind of very fast sketching. So I have a rectangle and this is a sketching pencil. This is a very, very soft pencil and I have a window that is a square cut in four representing the inside window and the door also if you look there is a little bit more to the door than just a rectangle so I'm going to add a few lines around there is two hinges here and also the bottom part has kind of like planks um, right here then we have this bush to the side that it's growing overgrowing and then we have a mat that is kind of like a trapezoid we have rocks on the ground we have the shadow that is going left upside down L and I really fast, I'm gonna make a few lines here for the wall, for the rocks on the wall. And then I can close them in and make them smaller, bigger. It's old world wall. So we don't have to make all of them the same. We can leave on some of them a little bit more space or not. So everything is going to be small rectangles. Do I need to go all the way down? Probably not, but I will really fast, just adding a few lines, giving me an idea where do I want and what I want. I'm gonna get my ochre. So what is gonna be the colors for the wall? So we have kind of ochre, we have a little bit red in it, we have white in it. So this is it, ochre. We can add a little bit of yellow and these paints are dried up. This is a palette that I have used and I thought some of the paints are good. What not to wear for um, painting or painting class is exactly what I have. The sleeves. I am going to get this sleeve away from me. So I have ochre, I have yellow, I took some white. So this is going to be my colors for the rocks. And honestly, if you see the brush, I am not really mixing the colors, but I loaded all three colors. So from here is I'm going to create little elements, rectangles, and I'm gonna try not to be super perfect. Some of them I'm gonna break. Some of them will be darker, some of them are going to be lighter. And I'm going to fill this in. I'm using the flat or the angle brush. You can use flat if you like. Doesn't matter. Some of them, some of the rocks will get a little darker. If you see how I'm leaving 
thoughts. I'm not trying to make it perfect. Usually this is a hard thing for beginners to do, but don't stress about it. Just go with the flow. And I'm gonna add, in the beginning, this is pretty much like a skeleton. The beginning of a painting. I can change things around as I go because it's just paint we're painting with acrylic so we have that flexibility not like the watercolor we need to be a little bit more careful I have more control and you see this how already starts looking kind of like rocks much I try to make it a little bit bigger rocks and the reason why is time it will be shorter time if I do this so you guys are not gonna get tortured with a long long lesson but um, if you like make them a little bit smaller thinner um, that's going to be much better now I don't need to go too much where the plant here is, but I will get inside a tiny bit. I'm not gonna get into a little bit more details as I go. So I'm planting my background. I'm just trying to plant the background pretty fast. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black with my ochre and I'm going to get that line here because what happens if we have plant here and water damage um, we will probably have a little bit darker color so everything now is going almost like a 45 degrees just to give us a perspective so I am doing the a little bit dirtier road it's still rocks 45 degrees angle on the lines that are coming down and otherwise they are just horizontal now I'm gonna take a little bit more ochre I'm gonna go take a little bit of the blue blue is gonna be a good color um, now when you mix ochre and blue it becomes a little bit greenish so I'm gonna apply that green right at where my ground meets the wall and maybe a little bit right here so do you see that beautiful the ochre is yellow ochre so this is why i'm getting a little bit of that green looking color washed my brush i'm gonna go this blue is dry let's see if i can wake that up Take a little bit of black with my blue and add a little bit of a shadow. So I'm using the small side of my brush and let's get a little water and this is going to too much. So let's get a little more blue in here. I think I'm gonna switch the brush. I need more precision. I'm throwing brushes around. I need more precision for the lines in between the rocks. And once I start putting those lines around and it's a greenish, that's not even a black, it's a greenish black. So once I start putting those lines, I'm gonna know where I'm going to either extend my rock or fix it a little bit and I'm not afraid of making it a little bit too dark uh, because I want you guys to see it number one and second I have white so if I don't like something I can take away part of that color with my white so I'm almost transparent on some areas. So I'm using a lot of water. 
Now if you see how unperfect my brush strokes are, I'm not trying to be exact by any means. I'm just trying to make is those rocks not necessarily all the same size. Some of them might be missing a little corner here and there. So that that's why I don't want to be perfect. So let's see, let's put a line here. Let's get a little bit darker. Now they're stacked, but not necessarily perfectly. There's my, let's get a little blue. And darken that blue. Get that window here inside. And the reason why I'm using blue and black is going to give me the illusion of a window and transparency. Instead of just black, it's going to be more like a hole. So I am getting that blue. It's going to give me the illusion of a window and something reflecting. It could be the sky. It could be just something on the outside world. Let's get a little bit of the other darker blue. Now I will stop this painting at 1.30. So whatever um, stage we are on, it's gonna be, could be halfway, could be all the way. But I'm gonna post the complete version of this video on YouTube so you can always go and check and see. I think probably by now I have close to 20 videos on YouTube. So go and check those out. Let's see. So I need to make a beautiful turquoise color. So I'm using blue, a little bit of purple here. Get a little white, a little bit of green, more blue, there is a nice greenish blue color, oops, almost dropped my brush. So I'm just framing the door. Do you see how I'm not trying to do and fill in all at once? And because I'm mixing the color, I'm creating different colors or the, my color goes in stages. So I can pick from white or lighter color to darker color and that will give more interest to my painting. So like, for example, these planks on the bottom of the door, I didn't make them the same and it's not the same as the picture that I painted a long time ago. It's just not going to be fun if everything is looking the same. So I will go in here at a little cross in the middle. Now I have my window framed. Go in, get a little bit of the purple, add a tiny bit of purple. Let's add a little bit of white on my brush. So I'm not quite washing my brush. I'm going between the different colors and making different parts of the door different color. This maybe that door was just painted and 2020 this door probably have chipped and it's ready to be paint repainted again. That's a joke, but um, I'm just experimenting and see do I want to see this it's gonna look more authentic Older looking let's get a little bit green here That's gonna give you that beautiful greenish Okay, so I'll leave the door right where it is here. And I'll come back to it later. I'm gonna go green. What color is good to mix with green? If we wanna make the green a little darker, we can go with 
blue. So now I'm going to add some plants. I'm using a brown brush and I'm just kind of swiping it gently on to the canvas. And I am using um, paper. So my canvas is acrylic and watercolor paper. I'm gonna get a little darker. Let's get a little darker because I need to add some shadows. So I'm going a little shadowy on the back and I'm gonna add more definition on some parts and on some parts I would not bother to add too much details because human's imagination will take us to the next level. I'm going to add a little plant onto the side. We'll see what we need to do. Too much. So I need to leave this to dry. And with the leaves, I went kind of around almost in a circle. But then I had some brush strokes a little bit mixed, not necessarily so organized. But usually leaves try to grow up and catch that sun. I'm going to go back to the rocks because now my rocks are dry. So I'm going to take... Let's wash this brush. I'm going to take a small round. And this brush is for oil or acrylic, so it's a little bit harder as a bristle. Let's get a little darker rocks. And every time I paint, doesn't matter if it's a different, um, if it's the same thing, it always comes up a little bit different. And the reason why is every day when I paint or not, I hope, I wish I can paint every day, but every time I paint, I feel different things. So different colors will uh, appeal to me in different days, depending on what I'm feeling. So sometimes I'll make them super, super light and bright. And sometimes I'll make them very bold um, almost like heavy and not being afraid of the color at all but I'm going to make it bolder and bigger and sometimes I'll make it super super bright and sometimes I'll be super gentle and light with my brush strokes so a lot of times when I start painting I don't know exactly where it's gonna take me so if you're painting don't try to do everything absolutely the same. Just let things happen the way they are happening. Don't force it. Just have fun with it. Because painting should be relaxing. It should be fun. And there is my rocks. This is a super... Oh, grabbed a little bit of gray. No big deal. I'm going to really fast color that up. There's no mistakes in painting. Okay, so let's get to the ground. So now the ground is going to be almost the same as my wall on the back. But I am stretching my brush strokes a little bit more. So I'm giving it a different, different type of a feel. So it's not that short of a brush strokes. Let's see, let's use a little bit of yellow in our ochre. So we get some parts to be a little bit more yellowy. Let's get white. And I never over mix a color. So if I get white, it's the yellow is going to be present because yellow and white will not create something completely different. I'm just going to tone it down and make it maybe a little bit colder version. Let's find a little bit of the blue and a tiny bit of the blue right here. I just felt like adding a little bit of blue. Um, let's add a tiny bit of the shade. 
shadow right underneath. So shadows, usually we want to use a little bit of, of purple. So I'm using uh, purple black. And I'm trying to add the shadow right here. So now since I'm already here with the shadow, I'm going to add the shadow on the door, which is one-sided. Also with this, I'm going to add two tiny little um, specks right there for hinges. Um, I'm going to try to get a little smaller. So I'm wiping my brush. Did not change the color, but I want barely, and I think I wiped it a little bit too much, barely to touch down. So I'm using a transparent version of that color, the purple color that I used. I'm just adding it. A few details you see now you're gonna see the door is gonna start happening let's add a little bit of shadow right on the top and the left of the window with that purple so it's barely visible but what we need to do is create the illusion because the the mind will take us the rest of the way so I'm gonna take a little bit of the bright blue and add some brightness. It's mixed a little bit white, a tiny bit white, and add a little bit of the brightness on some parts. It is an old door, so we don't have to do one color. It will be too boring. So we want to have fun with this. There is the door. So if you see, the door has blues and greens and purples and a little bit of white. So now I'm using a smaller round brush and I'm creating a little bit more of definition for the leaves. Now am I going and making exactly the shape of the leaf? No, I'm just pushing down on my brush and pulling towards a direction I feel like the leaf should be going. So some are going left, some are straight up, some of them are going from um, the right to the left and vice versa. Another color to mix with your green is yellow. So I'm gonna get green and yellow together and I'm gonna add another color to my leaves. Now I have uh, flowers that are coming here. So I'm overdoing the leaves a little bit, but if we have to end the class here, you still can be okay with the leaves. I'm gonna darken a little bit of my ochre with black. And I'm gonna pull some branches up the wall. So when I'm pulling branches, I pretty much gonna push slightly with my brush and kind of gently wiggle it around and take it away and less pressure on the brush will create that beautiful effect of the plant is growing thicker on the bottom and slightly getting smaller on the top so i'm lifting away from my canvas as i go upwards up meaning direction up on my canvas and maybe some of them can be a little bit thicker and that's okay I skipped a little bit and I'll leave it this way because I will put leaves there I don't have to have necessarily everything connected I can have few that are absolutely disconnected so there it is and I think I did a lot of branches on this one comparing this one but that's okay so I'm going to add a little bit of that brownish, it turned brown like a dark brown because I'm using the yellow ochre with a little bit of black and I'm going to add that in the base uh, and a little few specks here and there in the middle of the plant, the main plant. Now I need to leave this to dry. I cannot do anything until all my grain is dry. Um, I do, I can add leaves to my upper branches. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go, same brush, just loaded the brush and the same. I'm gonna start closer to where the branch is created and pull away. The faster I pull, now some of the leaves 
look, they're gonna look like they're floating and that is totally fine. They, they, not, they don't have to all be connected. Creating the illusion. I'm gonna get a little darker green and I'm gonna go back in where the lighter leaves are and plant a few darker leaves. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do much lighter leaves, which means I'm gonna leave a little white there in my green. So it's gonna be much lighter. Also, to lighten green, using yellow, it's always a good idea. So let's use a little yellow. And I'm going to do the same thing, just planting few. Now I'm gonna do less of that. And little by little, now that's gonna look like something is happening, growing, plants. Totally can fake this. All right, now changing my brush, I'm gonna go to my angled or if you don't have an angle, you can use a flat brush. You can do the whole painting just with a round brush. But if you have different brushes, experiment, have fun with them. I'm gonna go and do my little mat in front of the door, the doormat. So I'm gonna make it a dirty, muddy, um, purplish color. And I'm going to plant this in like a trapezoid and I'm gonna create almost like a grid now I'm not breaking about it it doesn't have to be perfect because what I'm gonna do next is get a smaller brush and this one is very little and I'm gonna go in with a little bit darker color let's get blackened and again don't over mix it and I'm gonna add a few shadows around and that's gonna be, and again, I am never trying to do anything perfect. None of my lines are straight, none of my lines are perfect. I'm gonna go back. I don't have to wash my brush at this point, but I did, so there you go. I'm gonna go with black. And you're not gonna hear me using black too many times. You're not gonna hear me say, oh, just use black. But in this case, since my paint is wet, I wanted to punch out a little bit more of the shadow effect. So I went after the purplish with black. I'm also going to pull a little bit more shadows right here and on the front. By planting a shadow, it lifts my mat a little bit higher. Now, if we have the mat, we have the shadows, what's missing? We're missing highlights. So I'm gonna go in with white and the color that I use for that doormat. And when I am preparing a small brush to be used, only the tip of the brush, I'm twirling it around and pulling it away to create that small Tip. Now I want to make sure it's not going to drip on me and barely touching. If you see me going a few times over without touching is because I don't want to overdo it. I just want barely to touch. I'm going to go in here add a little bit of a highlight on the door. So I call this marrying the picture. I'm using a color in one area. I'm gonna use that color in few other areas because then my eye is gonna travel all around the picture without stopping somewhere and being stuck. All right, I think we are almost ready for those plants, but I'm using a round brush and I'm just going to go around and create the first part of my plants. I am really going down and dabbing on the canvas. And I'm creating this fuzzy looking thing, which is the base of my plants. Now, try not to make it too organized, because then it's gonna look fake. 
we want to fake it good. <laughs> if we're making it, we just want to fake that good. All right, so I'm gonna go back. And since I just put that purple down, I know it's gonna start mixing with the color. So I'm making it a little bit lighter. And I'm trying to make sure that my bristles on the top are not together, but they're a little bit open. So I dabbed my brush on the paper tissue and that's too much water. So if it's too much water, what's gonna happen is it's not going to work. So it has to be more of a dry brush. So I need to make sure there's no water on the brush. Grab the color, grab the white, load it. And I'm loading it the same way as I am going to dab it on my canvas. And now I can go around and you can see the difference. So loading the brush the same way and I'm the same way I'm using it on the canvas. So let's get a little more white. Making sure I'm using a dry brush, not the right color. So I'm going to bring a little purple. Wow. The palette is running away from me. Need to bring a little more purple. I'm making sure I'm not too wet. And this is pretty much what's gonna be. And let's get a tiny bit of white. A little bit of white. Let's bring a little bit purple and blue together because some of those are more bluish. So do you see how open the front of my brush is? This is one of those things that you can ruin your brushes, but if I rather ruin my brush than make something that I'm not happy with. So adding a little bit of blue. Now we need to go a little lighter. But I need to make sure my brush is not overloaded because I just want a speck of white. There it is. It's happening. I think I'm going to leave it right here. And let's add one plant right here all alone. Get the lighter color. I'm gonna put, let's see, yellow, why not yellow? Just a few specks of yellow on this side or bluish. So tiny little dots. So um, just emphasize on a few of them a little bit. Defined. We can leave it the way they are. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You can be done at this point. Totally, totally up to you. I'm gonna put this, this one right here. Or you can take it to the next level. Um, that is up to you. Some of the areas need a little bit more of it's in between the rocks. Just need like a muddier color because um, I'm imagining that it's being weathered down so I don't want to create just one color and go all around because it's it just not gonna look right so I created that color with purple and black and my brush was dirty with the ochre and now I'm adding a little bit of white so it looks perfectly weathered color and I'm gonna go darker on some areas so I'm gonna go in between a darker or lighter version of that muddy color where we start having fun with the art and this is the part where 
a lot of beginners will get a little too frustrated but this is the part where the things start happening um, by that time you have um, people that are just starting to paint kind of to get frustrated because it's it's not looking quite the way they want it but you have to get to that point to make things happen so this is what I usually this is the part where I usually help people and I show them how with a very little touch here and there things are starting to look much much better and it's so cute because everybody's so surprised but um, don't ever stop don't ever give up just keep on painting much water so I can do two things get a brand new brush and just swipe and gone or I can wash the brush I'm using and do the same thing so don't worry everything goes now I'm using a little bit more water when I'm going in between the rocks it just makes my life much much easier and you see I'm leaving spaces in between parts and that is okay. There, let's get a little more wetter here. It's very undefined, not perfect at all. Let's get a little bluish in those rocks, why not? Just a tiny bit. And it's, it's very transparent, it's very light on paint. So I'm not going heavy. Now when I'm doing this, I'm going to go in here and add a little bit more of white. But because I'm using um, more water and barely touching, it's going to give me kind of better impression or better illusion of those flowers, the clumps of a flower. So I don't know, I'll, I'll lift it up so you guys can see, but do you see how now that it's starting to look more like flowers going on versus just the dabbing. So a beginner will stop with the dabbing and that is still okay, it still works. And if you are going intermediate or advanced, you're going to go and touch a few areas a little bit more and give it a little bit of a punch, I like to call it a punch. emphasize on a few things and once this dry I'm gonna add, come back to this and add a little bit lighter version of that because if my flowers are light um, purple um, this when the Sun is hitting them they're gonna be even lighter it's gonna be almost like a white version of the purple um, so this is already light and I'm going to go one more time, it's way too watery. watery. Um, and when it's that watery, when it dries, it dries slightly darker, so I'm not, I'm not worried. And also it's going to help me fill up the space. This, this was from an image um, and I'm not sure if that was Italy or France, I'm going to lie to you right now. I feel like, I feel like it was Italy, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, now that looks a little watered down white. Take some of that away. And I'm gonna go back to, and just add little wiggles, spots. My brush is very gently loaded and it's a, a watered down white and I am 
progressing slowly. I'm not trying to do, to do a big lip. becoming more and more alive. Mm. How many layers of that did we do? Quite a few. I think I like to move slowly forward with certain paintings. But sometimes I move fast. lighter purple and now I'm gonna go back to a version of the purple that it's light and pretty much what I did on the bottom I'll do it on the top the same way I'm gonna add them right here just another variation the door. Just clean it a little bit. Started with a, a little bit darker version of the door. And we moved. So I'm gonna just add in the shadow of the frame, just a line of that blue, which will give me the another illusion that this shadow is blue, but it's so dark that we cannot quite see it. So I am going to add the blue, which is a lighter blue. The darker blue, and I'll post all the colors in the description below the video. Let's bring a little purple to the blue. don't see on this door we don't see on this door the plant is coming a little bit over here so it's covering um, the handle of the door but on this door I didn't do that so I I feel like way too straight of a line so we probably should add a plant there some leaves so I'm gonna go back to my purple and I'm going to just add one right here, one right here, and one right here. Again, I'm creating a line, so I'm going to add one right here. And I'm going to get it a little bit darker. There. I'll let this dry, but if, when it's drying, I'm going to add a few leaves. Just a few, because the, the flowers are sticking out 
but with them there's always a few leaves that are gonna stick out. So now I don't need to add a handle. I can leave it the way it is. There's the light. Now since I use this color here I'm gonna go in and just touch up a few areas because I don't want it to look like I fixed something. Darken. So there is this plant and this plant. Do you see how it's all even? There is no light and shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit of the shadow on the bottom. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to emphasize a little bit on the shadow of this guy's here. Even though they have more shadow than this plants on the sides. I'm gonna go the same thing here. Just adding a shadow. And the shadow can be spilling a little bit off onto the street because if the plant is big that's what will happen. Making sure that not too much water. Going back to my greens and adding oops too much paint and adding a little bit green over. Same thing here. My shadow is just needs a little more here. There. That's much better. I get green light, I mean yellow and green to make light green. And I'm gonna emphasize on a few little things right here. Just green. Now, if you notice how I pushed my plant back because I added all these elements around. So this is one of the things that we want to watch out when we are creating um, something that it's layered. So the, usually the flowers are kind of sticking out from the bush or greenery. So I need to make sure my plant, my flower is not in, it looks like it's out. So I'm gonna add the blue, I'm gonna add the blue here. We don't want just to have the purple, that would be way too boring. I'm gonna go back to the lighter purple. Now this is way too wet, but I'll try and see what happens. Too wet, but it looks like it's gonna work. It's mixing there. I'll dab a little bit just to make make it look similar to the other ones. Good dab. And again, I added those later, which means they'll be slightly different. So I'm gonna touch up. Need to wait for this to dry. add more. Let's try. Yeah, it will work. Just have to change. There. So this looks like we can stop right here or we can continue cleaning up and cleaning up and making it better and better. So I don't know what rippies. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black into the window and I wanna almost make like, kind of little, not shapes, but smudges almost, representing a reflection. So I have parts of the window that are lighter and parts that are darker. And, and I think we can leave it here. We can totally leave it here. I know I'm going to be looking at this for a little bit and I'm going to be picking it apart. Um, so there is that. I 
adding this a little bit of this murky looking color back on the wall because I don't want this to stand out too much. I want it to be together with the rest of the picture. I did a little punch on the, uh, the door and emphasized a little bit more so it does look very similar and different than my original. My flowers here are more like uh, bluish purplish and much much lighter um, when I have much much darker purple but I emphasize a little bit more on the door, I give a little more highlights. Um, I can go a little bit with the blue and add a little bit of that darker darker blue on the shadow sides so that is cool looking now I'm happy with this one and I have to figure out like somebody somebody's painting this is somebody's I have uh, given this to somebody I cannot remember who. Now here is something that I'm going to add. This part right here where is the connection, the door frame with the rock. I'm going to add a little bit of almost like this is the rocks are cracked here. So I'm going to just emphasize around the door. a little more of that and again I pulled away for a second I'm like okay I'm done and then um, I see something that I want to make it better so this is how paintings happen I want to emphasize start emphasizing on one area I'm like you know what I'm just going to use a little bit of that too so the locks are not perfect. Not so perfect. Let's put a shadow here. Okay. Let's get a little bit darker right in between this. Dirty it a little bit more around the plants to give it a shadow, shadow effect. And I think I can leave it right here. I feel like I need more highlights on the um, tree branches. Let me get a transparent white and touch up. Ever so gently. And also of the leaves, why not? This is it. We'll leave it here and we will do something different. Alright.
right so it looks like we are done and this is our painting it turned out really cute um, this is a picture from the original which is gone and belongs to somebody else now but I always loved it there was a point in my life where I was painting a lot of doors and windows or benches and that is still one of my um, favorite subjects um, so there you go I share that with you I hope you like it if you do like it please don't forget to give us thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to get all the notifications for future videos click on that bell button so you'll get notified this is it for today thank you so much we'll see you soon bye